Scandinavian delegation, I would like to say that it's great to be back here in Moscow. We are recurrent visitors to this conference, which has uh, risen to become one of the most important conferences for sharing ideas on uh, preschool education, early child development, and so on. We're very happy to be here. Uh, I realize I'm keeping you from the coffee, so I will try to be uh, uh, somewhat brief. Uh, the topic of my talk as the present speaker as the previous speaker, is more to uh, give an overview, uh, launching some ideas about the way in which the Vygotsky and intellectual heritage can help us understand the current transitions of, of uh, society and social life and their implications for childhood and uh, children's development. Uh, the basic, basic idea of the Vygotskyan uh, approach to child development is that uh, uh, he recognizes the social and cultural situatedness of learning and development, and the idea that learning leads development, learning goes ahead of development. So children go up, grow up in social environments where they appropriate to internalize ideas and modes of social action that they later enact uh, as their knowledge uh, through the use of various kinds of cultural tools, be they language or physical tools. And the particular idea I want to launch as a promising avenue for studying what I'm interested in, which is the, the consequences of digitization uh, for human development, is this notion of instrumental acts of thinking. That is the recognition that people do not think just with their brains, they think with cultural tools as support. Um, to, no, it's working. Um, just to be quick, we are all experience a rapid change in, in many walks of life. Uh, part of this is the impact of, uh, of digital tools and digitization in society, which is one, is one of the most transformative powers of current uh, society. And we capture this in metaphors such as knowledge society, information society, media society, and uh, so on, the network society. Um, so we'll have to ask questions. What is socialization like? What is socialization about in such an environment when we design uh, envi uh, um, children's, this one is a bit slow. Oh, here it comes. And as I said, digitization is one of the uh, most transformative powers of uh, society. And the impact that it has will have implications for children and child, child development, as we see in many of the contributions to this conference and the conference program. Uh, Uh, we see this digitization of everyday life all around us uh, uh, happening and, and it's no surprise we are adapting to this uh, very quickly. As adults we have to learn and change our habits in many walks of life uh, and uh, it affects all kinds of professions, all kinds of professional activities. Uh, so my question uh, is what will these digital media imply for the lives of young children? What will they imply for their learning experiences, for their frames of reference, indeed for their cognitive capacities, so formulated? Uh, and uh, I would like to share this picture with you before, which is taken, uh, copied from the internet. Parents love to upload pictures of this kind, showing that their children are well ahead of time. And, uh, but behind this, there is a very interesting uh, development uh, that I would like to say something about. And uh, this is taken from my own, co own country, which is a fairly small country, about half the population of Moscow, I learned. But uh, anyway, it's, uh, and we follow very closely the uses of internet. We follow everything very closely, by the way, in Sweden, but uh, in particular, uh, this and we look at this uh, benchmarking that is when 50% of young people have been active on the internet on their own and this is what I emphasize with what I say is being active on the internet on your own not under parent guidance and uh, what we see here is an amazing development in the last few years in 2011 50% of the three-year-olds were active on the internet on their own in 2014, only three years later, 50% of the two-year-olds 
75% of the three-year-olds and well over 90% of the seven-year-olds were active on the internet on their own. In 2015, 67% of the two-year-olds were active on the internet on their own and 32% were active every day uh, on the internet. Uh, and my point is that this is bound to have consequences for their psychological functioning, for their frames of reference, for their general ideas about uh, the world. So how does this uh, social and cultural and technological development that we currently experience connect to Vygotskyan idea? And I would argue that he had an amazing capacity to... Uh, to connect to these types of changes, even though, of course, he didn't see, see anything of the, uh, of the digital development. He incorporated ideas about the uses of, uh, for instance, text and, and literacy and so on in children's lives. For instance, one of the things we see is that there are new uh, uh, learning trajectories emerging from these data. You can see that children begin their careers as virtu virtual citizens by looking at films and they begin by playing simple games. After that, they develop their skills of gaming, uh, often becoming very skilled already at the, the age of four and five. For instance, participating in very complex skills that most of us would not match, uh, would not handle. They engage in drawing and other aesthetic practices. Uh, after that, they start the social uh, interaction of when they begin to uh, relate to their friends. First on sites that do not require writing, but later they move into early forms of chatting. And then they end up in social media, where almost all of them are uh, when they begin school. And later we see them using uh, these technologies for school tasks, even if schools do not encourage them to do that. And for various kinds of creative activities, for instance, music creation and, and uh, similar things. Um, the reason we see this development is, is technological and social. It doesn't have anything to do with the children as such. It deals with the changes in technological resources that we have seen during the last 10 years, or not even 10 years, because this is very much connected to the smartphone and the, uh, and the tablet. Uh, what we see is the, the portability and mobility of digital devices that are around us everywhere. We see connectivity and constant online presence which changes the way we remember, the way we organize our lives. We see the smartphone, and in particular the tablet. And the tablet has, uh, has made an impact on the Swedish school system, and it, especially the preschool system, which is very clear. We used to have uh, computers in preschools, but the tablet transformed the whole situation because it's such an easy access uh, to the internet. And it's, such a, it's a device which is uh, very easy to use by pedagogues, teachers, and uh, children themselves. A very important innovation in this case was the touch screen, because with the touch screen you can circumvent all the literate activities that you normally would require to go on the internet, writing codes and things like that. And the final contribution to this is the app, which is an enormous cultural invention. There are now uh, uh, millions of apps, if not billions, I, I'm not sure, but uh, where children can access activities on their own and they can engage in very complex interactive tasks, problem solving and things like that. Uh, so, uh, if I just may connect this to this idea, one of what I see is one of the fundamental ideas of Vygotskyan theory, which is this notion of, of thinking as an instrumental act, as an act of using instruments, cognitive and material instruments technical tools. And I will just uh, quickly refer to the master in order to... He says, the inclusion of a, tool, of a tool in the behavioral process first sets to work a number of new functions connected with the use and, uh, of the given tool. Second, abolishes and makes unnecessary a number of natural processes whose work is now done by the tool. Third, modifies the course and the various aspects of all mental processes, including in the in instrumental act, replacing some functions with others. That is, it recreates, reconstructs the whole structure of behavior, just like a technical tool recreates the entire system of labor operations. Mental processes taken as a whole form a complex structural and functional unity. 
They are directed towards the, so the solution of a problem posed by the object, and the tool dictates their coordination and course. They form a new whole, the instrumental act. And uh, if we look at this, we look at the cultural opportunities and the cultural tools of the symbolic technologies and what they make available to children nowadays, I would argue that we never had a childhood of this kind before. Uh, for instance, sorry, I, I went one too far. For instance, we had cultural tools that provide opportunities for learning, individually and collectively, through games and other resources. And we have very early exposure to such symbolic tools and symbol mani manipulation. Uh, we have um, tools that offer potentials for creative and aesthetic development and experimentation and which are accessible to children because of the, this particular design of the touch, touch screen and the app. Uh, and we have, of course, an endless number of zones of proximal development where children may engage in collaboration with friends, adults, teachers, and technology. So we can, in, in, is, these zones of proximal development exist also in a virtual space to a very large extent through the, communica through the, communicative, through the communities that children are engaged in. So, um, to finish, I think this idea of the instrumental act of thinking and looking at the, the human mind uh, as a operating in symbiosis, in intimate symbiosis with the material and symbolic tools that Vygotsky expressed is a very fruitful approach for studying uh, development in, in, in our times. Our, our instrumental acts are not just in our brains, but they're contingent on technologies and symbolic tools. They are part of the 5% that the previous speaker <laughs> uh, talked about. And we do not just have a mind, but we have a hybrid mind, a hybrid mind that, cha that uh, shares intellectual work with external tools. And a hybrid mind develops, not in a biological fashion, but it develops in coordination and adaptation with a world that is designed. And the design of these tools are very different. So digital tools provide us with new access points to information, knowledge, and a vast range of, of uh, human experiences. Uh, given this development of changes in the communicative ecology of young children, I think we see important challenges for preschool education and for education, educators and for society as a whole. We need to have an increasing focus on supporting children in developing literacy, numeracy, and other skills that relate to symbol manipulation, to the mastery of symbolic technologies. And the age of learning of many of these skills, which used to be in elementary school, will rapidly move down to preschool because of these developments. Uh, we have to do this while keeping the tradition of preschools of using play rather than instruction alive as the leading activity. Learning must be integrated into playful settings games, aesthetic practices, and so on, between children and between uh, preschool teachers and, and children. So we should not take over and copy the instructional model with the curriculum of the established uh, schools. We should keep play as the leading activity. Uh, sorry, I have one left. Uh, but given this development, uh, sorry, this one is not entirely wrong, uh, to finish, uh, children must not only learn to use these tools, and they do that anyway, that, that is not under the control of the educational system because these tools are in the homes of children. So we cannot, uh, uh, we have to realize that that is a, the premise for the work. But children must learn, and this is an educational task, not only about how to use such tools, because that they can do independently to a large extent. They must also learn about them and their role in life and their role in learning. And they have to learn about the ethics of how to behave in virtual settings. How do we live virtual lives? This has to be a, a focus of socialization. They have to learn about the consequences and the implications of what they say and do in virtual settings, that they actually have an impact on other people. They have to learn about the dangers and challenges of being on the internet. And they need to develop a democratic and critical mindset 
relevant for a digitized society and a participatory uh, democracy. And this is a very important role for uh, preschool education to play. So, thank you very much. That was the end of my uh, presentation. Thank you. Thank you.